ఇంక విశిష్ట ఓలవ్యూ సోషల్ సైన్స్ సోషల్ అండ్ పొలిటికల్ లైఫ్ టూ చాప్టర్ ఎయిట్ ఎ షర్ట్ ఇన్ ఏ మార్కెట్ ఆడియో బుక్ దిస్ చాప్టర్ టెల్ ఎస్ ద స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ ఈ షర్ట్ ఇట్ బిగిన్స్ విత్ ది ప్రొడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ కాటన్ అండ్ ఎండ్స్ విత్ ది సేల్ ఆఫ్ ది షర్ట్ వి షెల్ సీ దట్ ఎ చైన్ ఆఫ్ మార్కెట్స్ లింక్స్ ది ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఆఫ్ కాటన్ టు బి టు ది బయర్ ఆఫ్ ది షర్ట్ ఇన్ ది సూపర్ మార్కెట్ బయింగ్ అండ్ సెల్లింగ్ టేక్స్ ప్లేస్ ఎట్ ఎవ్రీ స్టెప్ ఇన్ ది చైన్ డస్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ బెనిఫిట్ ఈక్వల్ ఫ్రమ్ ది from this or do some people benefit more than others we shall find out you can make this image and understand the concept a cotton farmer in karnal swapna a small farmer in karnal andhra pradesh grows cotton on her small piece of land the balls of the cotton plant are ripe and some have already burst so swapna is buying sorry busy picking cotton the balls with which carry the cotton in them do not burst open all at once so it takes several days to harvest the cotton once the cotton is collected instead of selling it it at a karnal cotton market swapna and her husband take the harvest to the local trader at the beginning of the cropping season swapna had bought over 2500 from the trader at a very high interest rate to buy seeds fertilizers pesticides for cultivation at that time the local trade trader made swapna agree swapna agreed to another condition he made her promise to sell all her cotton to him sell all her cotton to him cultivation of cotton requires high levels of inputs such as fertilizers and pesticides and the farmers have to incur heavy expenses on account of these most often the small farmers need to borrow money to meet these expenses at the trader's yard two of his men weigh the bags of cotton at a price of 1500 per quintal the cotton fetches 6000 the trader deducts 3000 for repayment of loan and interest and pay pay swapna 3000 swapna 3000 only trader cotton is selling cheap there is a lot of cotton in the market swapna i have toiled so hard for four months to grow this cotton you can see how fine and clean the cotton is this time i had hoped to get a much better price did swapna get a fair price on the cotton why did the trader pay swapna a low price where do you think large farmers would sell their cotton how is their situation different from swapna take a look at this first point traders sell the cotton at the karnal cotton market second ginning mill buys the cotton third ginning ginning mill removes the seeds and presses the cotton into balls bales fourth spinning mill buys the bales five spinning mill spins the cotton into yarn spinning mill sell the yarn to yarn dealers trader amma i am giving you a good price other traders are not even paying this much you can check at the karnal market if you do not believe me swapna don't be angry how can i doubt you i had only hoped that we would earn enough from the cotton crop to last us a few months though swapna knows that cotton will sell for at least 1800 per quintal she doesn't argue further the trader is a powerful man in the village and the farmers have to depend on him for loans not only for cultivation but also to meet other agencies such as illnesses children school fees also there are times in the year when there is no work and no income for the farmers so borrowing money is the only means of survival swapna's earning from cotton cultivation is barely more than what she might have earned as a wage laborer a shop in erod the cloth market of erod erod erods by weekly cloth market in tamil nadu is one of the largest cloth markets in the world a large variety of cloth is sold in this market cloth that is made by weavers in the villages around is also brought here for sale around the market are offices of cloth merchants who buy this cloth 
other traders from many south indian towns also come and purchase cloth in this market on market days you would also find weavers bringing cloth that has been made on order from the merchant these merchants supply cloth on order to garment manufacturers and exporters around the country they purchase the yarn and give instructions to the weavers about the kind of cloth that is to be made in the following example we can see how this is done putting out system weavers producing cloth at home this is a merchant shop in the bazaar over the years these traders have developed extensive contacts with garment firms around the country from whom they get orders these traders purchase the yarn thread from others the weavers like in villages around and take the yarn supplied by these traders to their homes where the looms are located in sheds adjacent to their houses this photograph shows a power loom in one such home the weavers and their families spend long hours working on these looms most weaving units have about 2 to 8 power looms on which the yarn is woven into cloth a variety of sarees towels shirting ladies dress material and bed sheets are produced in these looms they then bring back the finished cloth to the traders here they can be seen getting ready to go to the merchant in the town the trader keeps an account of the yarn given and pays them money for weaving this into cloth what are the following people doing at the erode cloth market merchants weavers exporters in what ways are weavers dependent dependent on cloth merchants the merchant distributes work among the weavers based on the orders he has received for cloth the weavers get the yarn from the merchant and supply him the cloth for the weavers this arrangement seeming has two advantages the weavers do not have to spend their money on purchase of yarn also the problem of selling the finished cloth is taken care of weavers know from the outset what they what cloth they should make and how much of it is to be woven however this dependence on the merchants both from both for raw materials and markets means that the merchants have a lot of power they give orders for what is to be made and they pay a very low price for making the cloth the weavers have no way of knowing what they are ma- making the cloth for at cloth for uh, or at uh, what price it will be sold at the cloth market the butcher sell the cloth to the garment factories in this way the market work works more in favor of the merchants weavers invest all their savings or borrow money at high high interest rates to buy looms each loom costs 20000 so a small weaver with two looms has to invest 40000 the work on these looms cannot be done alone the weaver and other adult member of his family work up 12 hours a day to produce cloth for all this work they earn about 3500 per month the arrangement between the merchant and the weavers is an example of putting out system whereby the merchant supplies the raw material and receives the finished product it is prevalent in the weaving industry in most regions of india if the weavers were to buy yarn on their own and sell cloth they would probably earn three times more do you think this is possible how discuss do you find similar putting out arrangements in making papads masalas bds find out about this in your area and discuss in class you might have heard of cooperatives in your st- area it could be in milk provisions paddy etc find out for whose benefit they were set up weavers cooperative we have seen that the weavers are paid very little by the merchant under the putting out system weavers cooperative are one way to reduce the dependence on the merchant and to earn a higher income for the weavers in a cooperative people with common interests come together and work for their mutual benefit in a weavers cooperative the weavers from a group and take up certain activities collectively 
they procure yarn from the yarn dealer and distribute it among the weavers the cooperative also does the marketing so the role of the merchant is reduced and weavers get a fair price on the cloth at times the government helps the cooperatives by buying cloth from them at a reasonable price for instance the tamil nadu government runs a free school uniform program in the state the government procures the cloth for this program from the powerloom weavers cooperatives similarly the government buys cloth from the handloom weavers cooperatives and sells it through stores known as cooptex you might have come across one of these store stores in your town women workers sewing buttons in a garment factory the garment exporting factory near delhi the erod merchant supplies the cotton cloth produced by the weavers to a garment exporting factory near delhi the garment exporting factory will use the cloth to make shirts the shirts will be exported to foreign buyers among the foreign buyers are business persons from the us and europe who run a chain of stores these large stores do business strictly on their own terms they demand the lowest prices from the supplier in addition they set high standards for quality of production and timely delivery any defects or delay in delivery is dealt with strictly so the exporter tries his best to meet the conditions set by these powerful buyers faced with such pressures from the buyers the garment exporting factories in turn try to cut costs they get the maximum work out of the workers at the lowest possible wages this way they can maximize their own profits and also supply the garments to foreign buyers at a cheap price what are the demand foreign buyers make on the garment exporters why do why do the garment exporters agree to these demands how do the garment exporters meet the conditions set by the foreign buyers why do you think more women are employed in the impex garment factory discuss write a letter to the minister asking for what you think would be proper payment to the workers the shirt below below shows the profit made by the business person and the various costs that he had to pay find out from the diagram below what the cost price includes profit 900 advertising 400 storage etc 200 purchase 300 the impex garment factory has 70 workers most of them are women most of these workers are employed on a temporary basis this means that whenever the employer feels that a worker is not needed the worker can be asked to leave workers wages are fixed according to their skills The highest paid among the workers are the tailors who get about 3000 per month. Women are employed as helpers for threading, thread cutting, buttoning, ironing and packaging. These jobs have the lowest wages. Payment to workers per month: tailoring 3000, ironing per piece 1.50, checking 2000, thread cutting and buttoning 1500. The shirt in the United States. A number of shirts are on display. at a large cloth shop in the united states and are priced at um, 26 rupees that is each shirt uh, sells for 26 or around 1800 use the diagram shown in the margin to fill in the blanks below the business person purchased the shirts from the garment exporter in delhi for 900 per shirt he then spent 400 for advertising in the media and another 200 per shirt on stores display and all other charges this the cost to this person is 900 while he sell the shirt for 1800 purchase 300 is his profit on one shirt if he is able to sell a large number of shirts his profit will be higher the garment exporter sold the shirt at 300 per piece the cloth and other raw materials cost him 100 per shirt the workers wages cost another 25 per shirt
the cost of running his office came to 25 per shirt. Can you calculate the profit per shirt for the garment exporter? Who are the gainers in the market? A chain of market links the producer of cotton to the buyer at the supermarket. Buying and selling takes place at every step in the chain. Let us recall who were the people who were in, involved in this process of buying and selling. Did they all gain as much? There were people who made profits in the market and there were some who did not gain as much from this buying and selling. Despite their having toiled very hard, they earned little. Can you place them in the table shown here? Compare the earnings per shirt of the worker in the garment factory, the garment exporter and the business person in the market abroad. What do you find? What are the reasons that the business person is able to make a huge profit in the market? You have read the chapter on advertising. Why does the business person spend 300 per shirt on advertising? Discuss. People who gain in the market. People who didn't gain as much in the market. Market inequality. The foreign business person made huge profits in the market. Compared to this, the garment exporter made only moderate profits on the other hand. The earnings of the workers at the garment export factory are barely enough to cover their day-to-day -day needs. Similarly, these are the small cotton farmer and the weaver at a road put in long hours of hard work. But they did not get a fair price in the market for what they produced. The merchants or traders are somewhere in between compared to the weavers. They have earned more but it is still much less than the exporter. Thus not everyone gains equally in the market. Democracy is also about getting a fair wage in the market whether it is Kanta or Swapna. If families don't earn enough, how would they think of themselves as equal to others? On one hand, the market offers people opportunities for work and to be able to sell things that they grow or produce. It could be the farmer selling cotton or the weavers producing cloth. On the other hand, it is usually the rich and the powerful that get the maximum earnings from the market. These are the people who have money and own the factories, the large shops, large land holdings etc. The poor have to depend on the rich and the powerful for various things. They have to depend for loans as in the case of Swapnam, the small farmer, for raw materials and marketing of their goods weavers in the putting out system and most often for employment workers at the garment factory. Because of this dependence, the poor are exploited in the market. There are ways to overcome these such as forming cooperative or home producers and ensuring that laws are followed strictly. In the last chapter, we will read about how one such fish workers cooperative was started on the Tawa River. Goal number 8. Decent work and economic growth. You can look some images here. Exercises what made Swapna sell the cotton to the tra trader instead of selling at the Colonel Cotton Market? Describes the conditions of employment as well as the wages of workers in the garment export exporting factory. Do you think the workers get a fair deal? Think of something common that we use. It could be sugar, tea, milk, pen, paper, pencil, etc. Discuss through what chain of markets this reaches you. Can you think of the people that help in the production of trade or trade? Arrange the statements given alongside in the correct order and then fill in the numbers in the cotton balls accordingly. The first two have already been done for you. Swapna sells the cotton to the trader. Customers buy the these shirts in the supermarket. Trader sells cotton to the ginning mill. Garment exporters buy the cloth from merchants from for making shirts. Yarn dealers or merchants give the yarn to the weavers. The exporter sells 
सेट्स टू दी बिजनेस पर्सन फ्रॉम द यूएस बी स्पिनिंग मिल बाइज दी कॉटन एंड सेल्ड यान टू दी यान डीलर्स वीवर्स रिटर्न विद द क्लॉथ जिनिंग मिल क्लीन्स द कॉटन एंड मेक्स इट इन इट इन टू बेल्स ग्लॉसरी जिनिंग मिल ए फैक्ट्री वेयर सीड्स आर रिमूव फ्रॉम कॉटन बॉल्स द कॉटन इज प्रेसड इन टू बेल्स टू बी सेंट फॉर स्पिनिंग इन टू थ्रेड एक्सपोर्टर ए पर्सन हु सेल्स गुड्स एब्रॉड profit the amount that is left or gained from earnings after deducting all the costs if the costs are more more than the earnings it would leads to a loss thank you